So, like most nerdy scientists, I enjoy telling people about my research. Not only because I find it interesting, but also because I enjoy seeing their faces and reactions when I tell them what I do. Friends and family have, however, requested that I postpone my work-related anecdotes till after they finished eating. <laughs> Apparently, my shop talk is best appreciated in the absence of food. You might have guessed it. My research involves working with poop. <laughs> so you might be thinking, what am I looking for in poop and why does it even matter? Well, like she introduced me, I'm part of the psychiatric genetics lab and there we focus on anxiety and stress-related disorders such as post-traumatic stress disorder. But why am I looking at poop when I'm investigating conditions that affect the mind? Well, as you sit there, you're a giant reservoir for about 40 trillion bacteria living inside and on your body. And these bacteria help you to perform very important functions, like metabolizing food and medicine, fight infection, and if you were a fruit fly, it would inf even influence your choice of sexual partner. But researchers have shown that these microbes that live in your gut, the gut microbiota, also influences your brain and behavior. So that's why I'm looking at poop. There's a complex interaction between the gut, its microbiota in the brain, called the gut microbiota brain axis. And within this axis, the gut microbes can affect your brain and behavior through several mechanisms or pathways, one of which is the enteric nervous system. So this is a complex system of millions of nerves in the lining of the gut. It functions together with the vagus nerve that directly sends signals between the gut and the brain. Another mechanism involved in this axis is the production of neurotransmitters or hormones. Now, did you know the gut produces about 90% of the body's serotonin, your feel-good brain chemical, and 50% of the body's dopamine, involved in reward and motivation? And both of these brain chemicals play an important role in regulating your mood and anxiety. The gut also produces toxins and immune-regulating molecules that can affect the brain. But this gut microbiota brain axis is bidirectional, so it functions in both directions. It's not only the gut that influences the brain, but stress and emotions can also influence the bacteria in your gut. So hormones released during stress influences the growth and the composition of these microbes in your gut. And this can compromise the integrity of the intestinal lining, leading to what we call a leaky gut which now facilitates bacteria and toxins to cross into your blood circulation, ultimately promoting low-grade inflammation, which has been shown to be associated with several psychiatric conditions. But how do we investigate this gut microbiota brain axis? So animal models provide us scientists with a unique opportunity to investigate the direct effects of these microbes on the brain and behavior, whilst also controlling for several factors that influence the gut microbiota that we cannot regulate in humans, such as the, the genetic makeup of these animals, their diet, and cage effects. So researchers from Canada use mouse models to elegantly illustrate the effect of these gut microbes on anxiety behavior. So they use two different types of mice. We call it mouse strains. The one is genetically programmed to be very stressed and anxious. They're called the bulb C strain. We would just call them the nervous nellies. And the other is genetically programmed to be quite relaxed and chilled. They have low anxiety. They're called the NIH Swiss strain, or the laid back Lucy's. So basically they wanted to know how their gut microbiota influences their behavior. So they decided, let's switch the gut content around and see what happens. And what happened was that the behavior of these animals were transferred together with the gut content. So those nervous bulb C animals now behaved like laid back Lucy's and the NIH Swiss animals behaved like nervous nellies just by swapping the gut microbiota around. And what they always also saw is that in these now nervous NIH Swiss animals, they showed a significant reduction in the levels of brain-derived neurotrophic factor, the BDNF, in the hippocampus one week after this fecal swap. So BDNF is a neuronal growth factor and it helps to sustain existing neurons in the brain. It also helps the development and growth of new neurons and synapses. And certain anti-anxiety medication work by increasing the levels of BDNF in the brain. So these researchers showed that despite the fact that these animals are genetically programmed to have a particular behavior, that they could change that behavior by changing the gut microbiota. So although mice and humans are distinctly different, these results do suggest that perhaps we can alter anxiety behavior by altering the gut microbiota. 
and that if we better understand the psychobiome, so it's the bacteria that affect our psyche and our behavior, it can help us better understand and potentially even treat anxiety disorders. But limited research has been done on the microbiota of individuals suffering from anxiety and stress. So our research focuses on post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD, which is a debilitating psychiatric condition that can develop following exposure to a traumatic event. So 73% of South Africans will experience at least one traumatic event during their lifetime. And 3.5% of them, currently translating to about 1.4 million people, will eventually go on to develop the disorder. So it's quite a big problem in South Africa. But not everybody who experiences a trauma will go on to develop this disorder. There are several factors that play a role in your susceptibility to developing PTSD. And these include factors such as your genetic makeup and your environment, so your childhood experiences and your social support. So we are interested in investigating all these different factors that play a role in the susceptibility to developing PTSD. And since the animal models showed that the gut microbiota play such a big role in anxiety behavior, we wanted to investigate this in humans. So for our study, we compared the gut content of individuals with PTSD and we compared it to individuals who experienced a significant trauma but did not develop the disorder. So we call them trauma-exposed controls. So how it worked is these participants collected their stool sample at home in a special tube, and they sent it to us in the lab, where we isolated the genetic material of all the microbes in the stool sample. So we isolated the DNA of the bacteria. And when we talk about the collective genomes of all the microbes in the gut, we call it the gut microbiome. So we investigated the gut microbiome of all these participants, we identified which bacteria are present and the relative quantities of these bacteria. And what did we see when we compared the PTSD patients to the trauma-exposed controls? This figure shows the PTSD patients in red. They had high levels of the PTSD score on the y-axis. So individuals with PTSD had lower levels of this specific trio of bacteria shown in the x-axis. And when we looked a bit further, we saw that individuals who experienced significant trauma during their childhood, again on the y-axis, they had significantly lower levels of two of the earlier mentioned three bacteria. So our study showed that there was a difference in the gut microbiome between PTSD patients and trauma-exposed patrols, but it also suggests that perhaps this alteration in the gut microbiome occurred early on in life, in childhood, in response to trauma. Now, since childhood trauma is such a strong known risk factor for the later development of psychiatric conditions, we're hypothesizing that perhaps this alteration in the gut microbiome might play a role in this susceptibility mechanism. But what else do we know about these microbes that we identified? So another study also found low levels of actinobacteria in depressed patients compared to controls. And the main functions of these bacteria that we identified is to regulate inflammation and the immune system. So increased inflammation and dysregulated immune system has been shown to have a negative effect on the brain and behavior. And one of the most underlying or most significant underlying factors of the majority of psychiatric conditions is that all of these patients suffer from high levels of inflammation. And scientists are now hypothesizing that perhaps the origin of this inflammation is the gut microbiota. So although our study cannot say whether this difference we detected in the gut microbiome is a, diff is a cause or a consequence of PTSD because we looked at one time point after these people have already developed the disorder. It does bring us one step closer to better understanding the role of the gut microbiome in PTSD and anxiety. And it can inform future studies to determine how we could target the gut microbiota to alleviate some of the symptoms of these disorders. And indeed, the gut microbiota is an easy target for intervention. For instance, with the use of probiotics. So these are the live bacteria that you find in the supplements that you often buy, or in probiotic fermented foods. Then we have prebiotics, so they are the fiber-rich foods that the good bacteria feed on, or symbiotics, which is a combination of pre and probiotics. In a recent study, 21 healthy individuals undertook a dietary intervention. It was called the gut makeover, and they did this for four weeks. And what they discovered was that this diet improved their digestive symptoms, but it also decreased the negative symptoms related to mood, cognition, anxiety, and depression, illustrating that a dietary microbiota intervention 
was effective in improving physical, but also mental and emotional well-being in the general population. Another study, a meta-analysis, investigated the effects of probiotics on depressive symptoms. So they included data from 10 randomized controlled trials in over 1,300 individuals. And what they saw was when they compared the healthy individuals to the, the depressed patients, they saw that the probiotics didn't really have a significant effect in the healthy individuals. But when they looked at individuals with mild to moderate depression, the use of probiotics significantly improved their mood and depressive symptoms, which is quite a promising result. So currently the main treatment for anxiety and depression is pharmacotherapies, so antipsychotics and antidepressants. But the efficacy, so how well it treats the problem, and its tolerability, so how well it's tolerated without adverse side effects, is suboptimal, and a lot of patients suffer from relapse. But in light of the findings I've shown you here today, I believe that the use of psychobiotics, being pre, pro, and symbiotics that can improve psychiatric symptoms, offers a promising solution. So psychobiotics are cost-effective, they're well tolerated by the intestinal environment, and it naturally regulates the gut microbiota brain axis, thereby reducing possible side effects. So by no means am I saying that patients should stop taking their prescribed medications, but I'm proposing an adjunctive therapy approach, where psychobiotics can be used together with prescribed medication to ultimately improve mental health outcomes. This is the future of mental health. Thank you.